Hey there, welcome to LFF. I'm your host, Matt Marash, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, I got you. There's a playlist of all of our LFF episodes. There's quite a library now. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday there's going to be a new upload with a different aspect of the large format photographic process. We still have lots of ground to cover. You know, one of the biggest causes of slowdown in large format photography is the individualized nature of things, right? We have individual sheets of film, we have these film holders, and we have to load our film one at a time, but not just loading, we also have to expose our film one at a time. Now, sure, this isn't different in 35 and 120, but once we get done with our film, we're also processing our film one at a time if we want to. We can react to this one of two different ways. We can either be mad at it and say, oh, this is so slow, I have to do this and that, or we can take all of this slow, this forced slowdown as an opportunity. What I mean here is with a little extra care and some good practices metering and some good note taking, we can really get the most out of each and every single shot that we take with large format photography. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about note taking, spot meters, and an entry to the zone system. Let's start with note taking. When I was just getting the large format, I knew I was gonna to have to take some notes and really kind of isolate every single thing that was going on. I was a super meticulous note taker. Aperture, shutter speed, ISO, filter factor, bellows factor, reciprocity failure, time of day, humidity, sometimes wind speed, pressure. Sometimes I'd even sketch out the scene that was in front of me. A lot of times it would take more time to do my notes than it would actually take the picture. It felt really anticlimactic. But the trade-off I was making there is I wanted to take as much time and bring those variables home with me so I could analyze what happened. Little did I know at the time, it's not just about what I'm doing before I take the shot and utilizing those notes, it's also referencing those when I'm processing my film. So once I take it to the darkroom, there's an extra step I can take to make sure I'm getting as much as possible onto every single kind of expensive exposure. When it comes to notes, there's a few things you can use for note taking and probably the easiest one is one you've already got on you. If you have a smartphone, you can just type your notes into that. There's a lot of helpful apps out there that can help you take those notes. I really just use speech to text. So I'll be like, captain's log, F8 at 120, 125th of a second. That's, that's really all I'll need to do anymore. But if you really like writing things down and you like a physical object, these little moleskin inserts or Hanamule, uh, journal inserts are great. There's even some companies out there that have specific photography-based ones, like Intrepid, they have one that outlines some other features we're gonna talk about later with the zone system. So that's all you need for notes. You need something to jot down your thoughts, jot down the tech stuff when it comes to your exposure. The other thing I'm gonna be talking about today on top of that is the utilization of a reflected spot meter. The reason I utilize a spot meter for this is a lot of the pictures that I take are outside in nature and this device allows me to measure a very small degree area of an exposure that's in front of me. So if I need to measure a very, very dark area way in the distance, I can do that with this one or three degree adjustable spot meter. Whereas if I was just using the dome or incident light meter, I would have a much harder time. You don't have to buy a spot meter to practice what we're doing today. It's gonna be a little bit harder, but you could use an incident light meter. You can also just use the light meter that's on your phone, or if you have a digital camera or a 35 mil camera that has spot meter, you can also utilize that. All right, so why a spot meter? This guy takes a very small degree reading of light coming from, uh, from the scene in front of me. So in order to get a good measurement with this, I just point it at the area. There's two little concentric circles on the inside, and I place those circles over top the area I wanna measure. I press my, little, press my little red button here and it takes that meter reading. So what happens when I take a reading with this? Well, what it's doing is it's measuring that light coming out and it's kind of averaging it out. It's taking whatever light is coming in and it's saying, if I wanna make that object middle gray, that's what the reference is for any light meter is middle gray. It's not too white, not too black, just somewhere in the middle there. A lot of times though, I don't want something at middle gray and we have to do what's known as placement if we want to uh, help visualize the scene in front of us. The first thing I do when I'm taking a light meter reading in my scene is I turn my spot meter on, I make sure my ISO matches the film I'm gonna take, 
and I hold it up to my eye and I place my circle over an area of the shadows that I want to retain detail in. So not something I know is gonna be black or I want to be black. I want it to be a dark gray with a little bit of texture, a little bit of detail. So I'm gonna point that at that subject, take my meter reading, and it's going to give me an f-stop measurement for my shutter speed at that ISO. Some meters you can change around and get the shutter speed reading instead of the f-stop, but I like the f-stop because this specific meter, the Siconic L778 Dual Spot F, allows me to plot up to five different readings along this f-stop scale. It's a tiny thing, but it helps me visualize things. If you can already count an f-stops or you have a preferred meter, go ahead and use that. So I've got my shadow reading. If I press my little memory button right here, it plots that along my f-stop scale. And what this is telling me, two seconds, f8, ISO 200, that's if I take the shadows of my tripod and camera there and make it middle gray. But I don't wanna make it gray. I need to do what's called placing my shadows. To place my shadows at the appropriate value that they're gonna be at, I need to underexpose. But this information here tells me this is where it is at gray, so to underexpose it, I'm going to increase my f-stop. The amount by which I underexpose, thereby placing my shadows, that's kind of the personal bit. Some photographers will go one stop, some will go two, some will go even three. It, that's kind of the your, your mileage may vary portion of this, uh, of this video. So what I'm gonna do, eight and a half, or somewhere between f8 and f11, I'm going to go two stops from there, so that's 11 and a half. 16 and a half is where my shadows are going to be for that exposure. And if I'm in a hurry and that's all I have time to do, that'll be the one measurement I take and I can already get a pretty decent exposure from there. But with one more extra step and our notes, we're gonna be able to get even more out of our film. So the next thing I'm gonna do, once I've found and placed my shadows, I also need to take a measurement of my highlight regions. And kind of similar to the shadows, I'm gonna look for a highlight area that isn't gonna be bleach white, but light gray with a faint amount of detail. So I'm gonna aim my spot meter around to a bright area here. Right around there looks good. And I'm gonna take my meter reading again. And what that's telling me is what that highlight area would be at middle gray. I don't want my highlights to be bland and gray, I want them to be brighter. So this is gonna be another tool that if I'm shooting slide film and positive film, I'm not gonna take that shadow reading. If I'm shooting those types of films, I'm gonna use my highlight reading and I'm gonna place my highlight by controllably overexposing. So whatever my f-stop reading is for my highlights, I will go two to two and a half stops from there. So I'm at somewhere between, whoa, 64 and 90. So I'm gonna go 45 and a half, 32 and a half, probably F32 would be a good place for those highlights if this was a film that uh, would clip in the highlights like slide film or positive film. But what I'm gonna use this information for is figuring out my range of the scene. You can see on my little f-stop scale, it's plotted everything out. I've got my shadows down here at eight and a half and I have my highlights up here at 64 and a half. That's quite a broad range on there. Knowing this information, if I count the f-stops between my shadows and my highlights, this is gonna tell me the range of my scene. Most scenes, most average normal scenes, if I expose my film normally, will be about five f-stops from that usable shadow with detail to that usable highlight with detail. If I have less than those five stops, I have a kind of flat or low contrast scene. And if I take note of that and I process my film for a little bit longer, I can expand that contrast out. Or on the opposite side, if I have more than those five f-stops and I take note of that and I tell, my, tell myself to process film for less time, I can contract that range from outside what my film can handle to kind of squeeze everything in there. What's happening is using my meter here, I'm taking enough readings to expose my shadows adequately and also taking my meter reading for my highlights and this tells me where I need to process. This is the basis of the zone system. I didn't even preface it because I didn't want somebody to just say, oh, zone system and like panic, click away. I wanted to just give it to you and then tell you, yeah, that's the zone system. It's not a super hard thing. You don't need to be a math whiz to do the zone system. At its core, what Fred Archer and Ansel Adams had worked on in the zone system was a means to 
expose for your shadows and develop for your highlights to get as much information onto that black and white or color negative as possible and then bring it into the dark room or bring it into digital and start working on it from there. That's the essence of the zone system. So at its core, the zone system divides a scene into a 10 f-stop range. We have our low zones. Some folks count zero, some folks count one. That's, that's a whole different debate. Your low zones, the lower that zone number is, the more black it's going to be, the higher that zone number is as you approach zone 10 is going to be bleach white and everything in between are those nice middle grays. And each zone is noted by an f-stop in difference. That's why we were counting f-stops on here. That middle gray that your light meter reads at, that's zone five. That's right in the middle. So essentially, when I take my spot meter out, I'm poking around and I'm finding what those areas are at zone five Using that zone five as a reference point, I can then controllably underexpose to get my shadows where I want them to be or controllably overexpose to find where my, my highlights are gonna be. And once I have that range, that tells me what I need to do with my film. Now, if you have your note-taking methods, you can use those to jot down where that exposure is gonna be. But over the years, I've simplified uh, my zone system practices down to a set of these little Little garage sale stickers. Yeah, these things. You've probably seen them at tag sales and yard sales before. What I use these for are to denote what type of processing I'm going to give my film. And this is where the zone system becomes a little bit more personal for folks. For me, I want to keep it as simple as possible because I'm usually moving pretty quickly in the field. And sometimes the light's changing. I want to just get to it. So my orange sticker is for normal processing. My green sticker is green means go. My green sticker is for my expanded development. This is for lower contrast scenes. This tells me green, keep going. It tells me to process this sheet of film a little bit longer than my other normal sheets of film. Or if I put a pink sticker on here, this is kind of my stop right there, pull it out early. I'll put this sticker on films that have a wide contrast range and I need to pull the film earlier. So before I'm done with my normal processing time, I'll pull these sheets first, these sheets at their normal time, and I'll leave these to cook a little bit longer. This way, I'm standardizing my, my negatives a little bit more. I'm getting different exposure ranges, but different processing. This is one unique advantage that we have in large format that we might not have had access to in roll films. In roll film, if you wanna change something drastically, you're kinda of stuck uh, shooting the entire roll that way. With sheet film, it's individual sheets. You can do individual processing on that. You just have to put, put some notes down. Again, I like the sticker system because these stickers are really cheap. I think a whole pack of this was like four or five bucks and it lasts me, well, hundreds of sheets of film. And whenever I'm out in the field, I'm really glad that I have these little stickers. See these? I had pink stickers. When I went down to Clifton Gorge last week, I had three of my five shots needed these pink stickers because I was shooting into some relatively backlit situations with some really dark shadows. And that told me that I needed to make sure I had adequate exposure for the shadows, but then that would blow the highlights out. So placing this little sticker on here told me if I underdevelop those sheets of film a little bit, that'll make sure I have all that range onto my film. This was a bit of a primer to utilizing your spot meter, practicing some very core basics of the zone system and applying those and taking some notes so you can reference it later. The zone system isn't just pre-exposure, it's also post-exposure. It's that developing side of it and even a little bit in the printing area. If you want some more information on the zone system, there's one book I can recommend above all others and that is the original, Ansel Adams, book two of his series, The Negative. Ansel actually had three books, The Camera, The Negative, and The Print. If you can only afford one of them, I'd go with this. There's lots of them new and used. I picked this one up used for a couple of bucks. It's a great addition. There's a lot of great tips for individualized film processing, talking about how to utilize filters, lots of great tips with composition, and it has a really detailed outline of the zone system. So the zone system isn't scary, guys. It's just another way to approach your exposure, approach your photography. And the big takeaway, if you're not that big of a tech photographer, is this is all a means to an end. It's a means to visualize, I'm seeing in my mind's eye what that finished print is gonna be, and now I'm utilizing some very simplistic tools and a couple of different measurements to make sure that when I take this in the dark room, I'm not just shooting in the dark, I know exactly what I'm gonna get out of it as long as I control that exposure and I control that development a little bit. 
Remember, we're exposing for the shadows and developing for the highlights. And if you shoot positive films like slide film or instant film like Polaroid or even digital, you can still utilize the zone system, but instead of biasing your exposure towards those shadows, you're gonna bias your exposure towards the highlights and the shadows kind of fall where they may. So you can utilize the zone system in whatever type of photography you're doing, but I think it's especially important in large format photography because we have that extra time and that individual control going on already. Just take a few steps, take a few notes, and you're there. If you have any questions about the zone system, please drop those down below in the comments. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll catch you next time for more LFF.